Hi. In this series of videos, I want to show you how to create the images that are being used for the CSS navigation bar right up here. And there are actually three states to this nav bar. There's the off state, which has the light gray, a hover state, which has the medium gray, and a current page state, which actually has the black color here. And you can see in two of these states, we actually have a filled in color. So let's go ahead and create this in Fireworks. If you've never used Fireworks before, you may want to go check out, uh, we have a short series of videos on just the basics of using Fireworks. Now, there are a number of different ways to do this, and you can do it again in Fireworks, you can do it in Photoshop. I think Fireworks, for a lot of things that web designers do, is a lot quicker and a lot easier to use than Photoshop. Photoshop certainly has its place, but uh, for uh, simple things like this, Fireworks works great. And again, in Fireworks, there are different ways to create navigation bars. I probably do mine the most um, old-fashioned of all the ways, uh, but whatever way works for you, um, go for it. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new Fireworks document here, and I'm just going to say that this is 600 by 100. And I'm going to set the background to being uh, white here. And I can click OK. And there's the start of my uh, canvas for my navigation. I'm going to point up here in my ruler and I'm going to drag a guide down just somewhere on the page. And that's going to be the bottom of my tabs. Now, in Fireworks, you've got some panels on either side and possibly a properties panel down here at the bottom. You can also put the properties panel into your tabs over here if you prefer it. But the buttons that I'm going to point out to you right now are mostly over here in this panel. So I'm going to come to this button right here, and you'll see right now it's set for ellipse. But you're going to see there's a little arrow on that, and that indicates that if you press and hold on that button, you'll get some different options here. And the option that I want is the rounded rectangle. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, and you're going to see my properties change down here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is just drag out a rectangle. And then I'm going to come down to my properties, and I'm actually going to set this up. And I want the width of this button to be 100 pixels, and I want the height to be 50 pixels. And I'm not going to set the X and the Y. I just wanted to set the width and the height. Because then what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and drag this down. And later, when I slice this up, this guide is going to be the bottom of my, um, the bottom of my uh, tab. So you can see there's our first rounded rectangle. Now we have four pages that we're doing, so I'm going to go ahead and copy that, and I'm going to paste it in four times. And I'm just going to drag these on over here, just like that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them all, just by dragging a box out, and you see anything that the box touches is going to be selected. I'm going to come here to the Modify menu and select a line. And I want to go ahead and distribute the widths equally. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And you can see how much space is in between them. Really doesn't matter, but I just want it to be even for right now. I also want to make sure that the tops of these are aligned. So I'm going to go to Modify here, Align, and I'm going to say make sure the tops are aligned. I select that, and that will ensure that my buttons aren't different um, heights. The next thing that I want to go ahead and do is I want to go ahead and create this circle and that home text there. So again, I'm going to jump back into Fireworks here. I'm going to come back over to my shape right here, and I'm going to select the Ellipse tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to point here, and I want a perfect circle. Now, if I just drag a shape out, it can be any old shape I want. But if I hold the shift key down when I drag a shape out, you're going to see it gives me a perfect circle. So I'm going to go ahead and select the color that I want for this first one, which is going to be this green color here. And then I'm going to draw that circle right out here. And I'm going to release and click my pointer tool here. And let's see the way that looks. That looks just about the way I want it to. You can see the green fill, and it doesn't have a stroke around it. So now I'm going to go ahead and move this into position right here. And actually, I'm going to move my bottom down just a little bit so I have a little more room. 
and I can accurately position that just simply by using my arrow keys and if I wanted to make it a little bit smaller I could let's go ahead and change that to 15 pixels just to make it a little bit smaller so there I've got that let's go ahead and move it over just a bit and that looks about the right position I'm gonna copy it and paste it and I'm gonna move it in to position on the other tabs and you're also going to notice fireworks will give you alignment rulers automatically so you can automatically make sure things line up I'll paste that again and drag this one on over whoops that didn't quite get it but that's okay I'm gonna paste that in there again and drag this one on over and I can do the same thing I can select each one of these circles by simply selecting one and then holding down the shift key and selecting the others and I can come up here to my modify menu I can select a line and I can say center vertical or I can say center horizontal and when I did that it made sure those dots were lined up now I'm gonna go ahead and click on that one and this was a yellow color this was a lighter shade of blue and this was red so I've selected a different color for each one of those dots. Now I'm going to select my text tool right here. When I do that again the properties panel changes down here and it's going to let you set the properties for this piece of text. And the only thing I want to do right now is change the color to white so I can actually see what I'm typing. And I also want to make sure that it's aligned to the left. And I'm going to go ahead and type home. and you can see the way that worked. Now I'm going to go ahead and copy that and paste it in for each one of my buttons. Get it positioned just the way I want it. And before I go too much farther, I'm going to go ahead and make that about services and contact. And now we'll go ahead and just, I'm just going to use my arrow keys to get this exactly where I want. As far as the spacing in between the circle and the text. Just like that. There we go. Try and get them just about even. And then I'm going to select each one of those again. And I'm again going to go to modify, align, and I can select center, horizontal. Or if you wanted to make sure that the dots are lined up, which is what I should have done with the text boxes, we can go ahead and select all eight of those elements, go to Modify, Align, and again, Center Horizontal. And that will make sure that they're all set up like that. So there's our current page indicator right there. And I might want to go in and fine tune the spacing in here just by moving around using the arrow keys. And the next thing we want to go ahead and do is we want to go ahead and create the other two states, the hover state and the off state. And we're going to do that in the next video.